210 lives as of today. It has also caused injuries to many more and wreaked havoc on property, infrastructure, and livelihoods. No corner of our country has been spared from this havoc. The reopening of date of our schools after the April holidays, which was scheduled to, for Monday this week, has had to be varied. Transportation has become challenging in many parts of the country due to flooded and damaged roads and bridges under threat of ravaging rivers and overflowing dams in downstream regions is immense. Water volumes in the Seven Fox hydroelectric power dam have hit historic highs, with Masinga and Kiambere dams already spilling over through the managed spillways and threatening to overflow into neighboring settlements and causing devastation downstream in Garissa and Tana River counties. Sadly, we have not seen the last of this perilous period as the situation is expected to escalate. Meteorological reports paint a dire picture. The rains will persist, increasing both in duration and intensity for the rest of this month and possibly after. The Meteorological Department and the IGAD Climate Prediction Application Center have issued a stark warning. Kenya may face its first ever cyclone. This cyclone named Hidaya could hit any time and is predicted to cause torrential rain, strong winds, and powerful and dangerous waves, which could potentially disrupt marine activities in the Indian Ocean and settlement along the Kenyan coast. Our country must act decisively and swiftly to mitigate the devastating impacts of the present crisis and protect life and property. The loss of human life, displacement of people, and destruction of property has been most profound within fragile ecosystems on which the government has taken the following steps. First, the government has mapped out 178 dam and water reservoirs situated within public and private lands in 33 counties, which are already full and present imminent danger to adjacent settlements and people. Second, areas prone to landslides and mudslides in various counties have been identified as high-risk areas from which the adjacent settlements have to be evacuated. Third, relocation notices have been issued to all persons living in unplanned settlements within riparian reserves along rivers, streams, and other water courses. Acknowledging the gravity of this unfolding situation, the Cabinet has met three times over the last 10 days to provide leadership on a whole-of-government response to this crisis. To support disaster response and mitigation efforts across the country, the Treasury has been directed to provide adequate resources and work with other development partners to provide for the purchase and supply of food, medical, and other non-food items. County security committees are directed to determine on a case-by-case -case basis the radius that shall constitute the scope of the area subject to evacuation and mandatory relocation that has been already been pronounced. The county security committees are further directed to continuously monitor other dams and water reservoirs across the country that may not be presenting a risk now, but could do so in the event of further precipitation. The Kenya Defense Forces and the National Police 
are directed to deploy resources, personnel, and equipment for carrying out coordinated public safety and risk mitigation operations in as many parts of the country as they have installations. Security agencies are further directed to enlist the support of the National Youth Service and work with the National Government Administration officers to respond to this emergency, including ensuring timely, orderly, and human evacuation of all persons at risk. Cabinet secretaries will spearhead disaster response and mitigation efforts across the country. And to this end, ministries, departments, and agencies are directed to work closely with the National Disaster Operations Center and security agencies to ensure the whole of government approach to the management of the prevailing crisis. The government working with stakeholders has put in place adequate measures to provide temporary shelter as well as food and non-food essential supplies. The ministry responsible for special programs is directed to work with development partners and relevant humanitarian organizations to mobilize adequate food and non-food supplies to support all affected persons in every part of the country. The Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development through the National Cereals and Produce Board is directed to make available food supplies in government stores to support this effort. The Ministry of Health is directed to work with development partners, including the World Health Organization, AMREF, Red Cross, UNHCR, World Food Program, and other relevant humanitarian agencies to mobilize resources and logistical support to avail essential drugs, food, and other medical supplies to those affected. The Ministry of Interior is directed to coordinate the relocation and evacuation of the affected members of the public, identification of sites for temporary shelter for displaced persons, and supervise the overall support program. The Ministry of Education is directed to postpone the dates of reopening of all schools in the country for the second term until further notice. Members of Parliament are requested to reorganize the CDF allocations to prioritize reconstruction of school infrastructure that has been damaged as a result of the floods ravaging the country. As the national government plays its role in dealing with the current situation, I request and urge county governments, development partners, and private sector to join in these efforts and provide support as, where, and when they can. In Nairobi, settlements in riparian reserves have complicated re the response efforts and compounded and aggravated the risk to human life, safety, and property destruction. The Ministry of Interior is hereby directed to enforce the relocation notices issued earlier upon their expiry at 6.30 p.m. today. We appreciate and thank members of the public who are already cooperating with government on the evacuation and relocation effort that is underway. I want to mention specifically citizens in different parts I saw, for example, in Dandora, citizens themselves volunteering, removing their structures, carrying their wares, carrying their uh, furniture, and looking for places to store them. It is carrying their uh, furniture and looking for places to store them. It is an encouraging development that citizens are part of the solution and they are participating in the evacuation and relocation efforts. Further, the government appreciates the goodwill demonstrated by thousands of individuals and institutions, volunteers and others who have made tremendous input 
into alleviating the suffering and pain by those affected by the prevailing crisis. In the same spirit, the public is called upon to respect and adhere to safety alerts and interventions and to cease and desist from risking their lives or the lives of others by daring the force of nature. Kenyans must avoid endangering their lives by recklessly attempting to cross flooded rivers or drive on waterlogged roads. I extend my gratitude to the media for their commitment to contribute airtime worth Kenya shillings 100 million to support response to this crisis. The measures we are taking at present are aimed at responding to the current crisis in the immediate and the short term. For us to comprehensively address such a threat in the long term, we have to acknowledge and act to reverse the adverse effects of climate change. The current unprecedented crisis of floods that our country is experiencing, as well as the recent devastating drought our country faced, the worst in Together, we will win the war against climate change and also we will build a resilient nation. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless our great nation, Kenya. Asante Nisana. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, my name is Mwangi Maina from Minoro TV. You have said that the Treasury has been directed to provide enough funds. I would like you probably to mention how much money has the government set aside to respond to this crisis. Again, you have asked the county governments to work in collaboration with the Ministry of Interior. We have seen some counties have already started setting aside uh, money to respond to this crisis. So how will the national government and the county government work hand in hand to ensure that there is a seamless response? Thank you. We have um, three things in quick succession. Treasury has been mobilized to number one, prioritize disbursements to counties to make sure that counties have the necessary resources to deploy intervention to manage this crisis. Number two, we have also um, directed Treasury to provide resources to our NGCDF and members of parliament to prioritize the reconstruction of school infrastructure that has been destroyed by the floods. Number three, we have also directed the Treasury working with the Ministry of Roads and Infrastructure and our military to provide resources for roads, bridges, and other travel infrastructure that has been destroyed by the roads, by, by the floods. And we have asked Treasury to work with the resources they have, engage with development partners, and we are also encouraging the private sector to step forward. In fact, private sector persons, individuals, and organizations who wish to contribute to this national effort, the office of the deputy president will coordinate that effort and additional information on how citizens, private sector individuals, private sector institutions can participate in this exercise will be issued by the office of the Deputy President. How will the government ensure that Kenyans continue to get health care services? And another question, what is the status of the dams that were earmarked for the construction by the government? I think let's keep to the subject of this uh, press conference. Other matters will be handled differently. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, my name is Safina Ching from Citizen TV. I have a question. Most of the Kenyans are not sure where to go when 
they are receiving this warning that they should move to higher grounds. Probably just explain to us what exactly the government has done to provide order and uh, organize them to know where to go when they are told to move to higher grounds. Members of the provincial administration, members of the national government administration officers, our security agencies are already working with communities, with county government officials on identifying the areas that uh, citizens can be relocated to. There is a whole of government process underway in different parts, especially in the fragile areas that we believe are dangerous and we need to evacuate uh, citizens. So there is already a comprehensive plan run by the Ministry of Interior, working with county governments, working with um, communities on the ground. And that is why I was saying some community members have demonstrated tremendous patriotism and cooperation by being available to be evacuated, participating in the relocation exercise. And it is commendable that citizens themselves are taking charge of this process, working with members of the national government, the county government, and our security agencies. Naitua Sarafi Narobi kutoka KBC. Sali langu ni kusiana na ufunguzi wa shule. Itakuwaje kwa zile shule ambazo wanafunzi walikuwa sha rejea shuleni. Na vile vile kwenye wizara ya ilimu. Tunatarajia kweza kuona kusama kupitia mfumu wa kidigitali. Wizara ya ilimu tayari kuna maagizo na maelezo. Ya vile mambo ya shule itaendelea kutoka hapa. Tumesema mashule yale yalikuwa yanatarajiwa kufunguliwa jumatatu sasa hayata funguliwa mpaka pale mwongozo mpya utakapotolewa na wizara inaelewa eh, vile ita litaendelea eh, baada ya wiki ijayo serikali itatoa mwongozo zaidi baada ya wiki ijayo thank you very much god bless you see you next time